What I have here is a picture of a stump, a rotten stump that is uh, decaying, slowly de decaying. Note that, slowly decaying. So what we're going to discuss, as you can see in the title, is <clears throat> Daniel chapter 5. The reason I'm going to reteach this is because it had always been mistaught. And it was mistaught based solely on the fact that in that scripture, in that chapter, it was alluded to and only alluded to the idea that the tree would grow back. But I'm going to prove unequivocally that that was not what was meant to be meant in that scripture. And it's very clear why it was never meant to mean that. So what's been taught for thousands of years in that scripture, and it's never been taught any other way, is that the angels cut down the tree, the tall tree, which was the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, and that if he would repent, then he would be given that same kingdom back, that that tree would regrow like most trees do, many trees regrow even after they've been cut down. But what I'm going to show you, what everybody has missed, and this is why this has been taught wrong for so many generations, is the fact that the angels were specifically told to put an iron and a bronze band around the stump. Specifically. And this is what all of these uh, respected, uh, renowned preachers have taught that this tree was regrown when in fact it never did regrow. This is why it never regrew, because the angels put an iron and a bronze band around the stump. And what that does is make sure that the stump decays. That is to ensure anybody that knows anything about uh, agriculture, trees, an arborist, any arborist can tell you this, that if you band, you can band even a live tree that's not even been cut down. If you band that tree, that band will ultimately choke off and kill that tree. So the angels were specifically told to put a iron and a bronze band around this stump, this kingdom that had been cut down. And the lost teaching that so many of these ministers for over thousands of years have missed, have completely missed, <clears throat> which was the hidden parallel within that teaching. So they have mistaught it that the, the kingdom would rise again, the tree would, would regrow from shoots when it could, could not possibly regrow because of the bands that were there to make sure that it rotted, to make sure that kingdom rotted forever, but rotted slowly. Let me point that out. The whole purpose was to, so that the kingdom would slowly rot instead of digging up. That's why he meant to leave the stump behind and band it to ensure that it slowly rotted. So one of the things that occurs with a stump that this has been done to is that it attracts pests. That was very important. This is what God wanted to for people to see in this parable. That a rotten tree, a tree that is slowly rotting, will attract pest. It attracts two very specific pests. Very specific pests that bite, that pinch and bite and irritate. These are also two pests that burrow. Understand, they burrow into the land and into the roots of that rotting tree. They burrow themselves and set up a home in that tree. They set up shop. 
But more importantly, uh, these same pests begin to colonize and spread out in the surrounding land to all the other trees that were surrounding that one tree that had been cut, cut down. Those pests are termites and ants. Realize that and what termites and ants do in a rotten tree, a rotten stump, is one year they're seasonal. One year the ants will come in and take over the termites old home and then the next season the termites will come back and, and, and it's a, a rotating cycle between the termites and the ants. They, they constantly battle one another and this is what you see in that land that once was the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. This is exactly what you see. It's been an ongoing cycle of backbiting and fighting, a rotting and decaying of that land. That, that land has never produced good fruit since. It's been a constant state of, in a constant state of turmoil since King Nebuchadnezzar. It's, it's never flourished for any long period of time because it has been in a constant state of rot and decay. Because also, what happens with a, with a rotting tree, as its roots begin to rot, it will start uh, attracting funguses and uh, bacterias that begin to grow within the roots, within the structure and foundation of that tree. Bacteria and fungus, which can be toxic and deadly. Understand that. Bacterias and funguses are to can be toxic, deadly, and breed disease. And this is what you've seen in that land that once was the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. It's never become a great kingdom again. It has not ever since that time become a great kingdom because that stump was cut down and or that tree and it was banded and all the surrounding areas have been compromised with the pest. The pests that have spread out from that one tree when that kingdom was cut down those pests began to spread out in the surrounding lands, and this is why you see Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, all of the surrounding areas are constantly at, at one another's throats. They're constantly fighting. They And because of this, they stay in a constant state of decline. Even if they uh, start thriving even a little bit, a war breaks out. Just like the battle, the, the cyclic uh, battle between the ants and the termites. It's a constant cycle. A constant cycle of fighting, poisonous rhetoric, decay, turmoil. It's just constant. This was, this was the teaching that was always meant to come from that teaching. <clears throat> and another method to prove that we have one famous saying in these days, which is, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So, King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, he did get his kingdom back, but it was never even close to the same. And one of the important parts to note, when you, when you leave Daniel chapter 4 and move into chapter 5, you'll read about his son, Belshazzar, who... Again, the apple did not fall far from the tree. Belshazzar ended up being just as bad, if not worse, than his father. Just uh, another poisonous, backbiting ant. So, as all these teachers, and, and, and again, this is what disgusts me, is no, these teachers truly don't, think on the word of God they don't sit and ponder on it and when you miss when you miss very important pieces in the scripture you miss an entire teaching literally and get an entire teaching wrong and not just wrong by a little bit they got it wrong by a lot 
they got it wrong by a lot. That tree that has been cut down that was once King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, root rot set in because that tree was banded. That one verse that they miss about how the angels banded the tree with iron and bronze. They, Every preacher I've ever known in every teaching on this has completely missed that. And they all said, well, King, it, it alludes to, and only alludes to, through repentance, King Nebuchadnezzar's gained his kingdom back. Yes, he gained it back. But that kingdom, that tree, had been banded, had been constrained to ensure that it never grew back, that it only slowly decayed, which attracted pests. And another important thing to note about a stump, when a stump is in the land, has not been dug up because this is the method, this is the typical method, you want to get rid of a stump because it will rot and create disease in the land, which is commonly called root rot. There's a technical name for it, but the, the layman's term is called root rot. And it will prevent any other tree for a long period of time from ever growing once root rot sets into the ground. And any tree that grows, if you don't treat that land from where that stump decayed at, if you do not treat that soil properly, then any tree that grows after it will never properly grow. Its branches, as it grows, it will develop root rot just as uh, what from what the bacteria and fungus was left behind from the previous stump that rotted. So the typical method to treat the land properly, and this is why he told the angels to cut down the tree, but leave the stump and band it. He specifically told them, do not remove the stump, leave the stump, and ban that stump so that it would slowly rot and decay. Note that. That was the teaching that was always missed for thousands of years. Y'all go back and read that, and if you need a little bit more teaching, you can go to Job chapter 14, uh, verses 7 through 9, I believe, and you'll learn a little bit more about that about a stump and a tree and a root rot. Be sure to stay in the Word. God bless.